How's it going everyone? A lot of people have been asking me to make an updated video of all the equipment and the software that I use to stream and make my videos. So today I am going to give you a walkthrough of what the room that I stream and record looks like. All of the equipment that is in my PC and all the other equipment that I use for sound and uh, HDMI video encoding everything else. So first, let's uh, let's do a quick walkthrough of what the room looks like. Here we have the bedroom that I have converted into my studio. You can see in the background there, my green screen is just a piece of green cloth that I got at Walmart and thumbtacked to the wall. The middle monitor that I use for the computer is actually a TV that I already had, so I just saved myself a little money and HDMI to that for my middle monitor. Over here, we have the PC that I built, which I'll get into detail of what all is inside that PC. And the desk you're looking at has my other two monitors, my Xbox, PlayStation, the Razer keyboard, mouse, mouse pad, the other laptop that I use if I need to look things up while I'm streaming, my Blue Yeti microphone. You can see the Razer headset that I was also wearing just a second ago. And this desk is actually two different computer desks that were L-shaped desks that I combined into one big U-shaped desk just for the space needed. And let's get into what is inside this PC and how I have everything connected. The heart of this PC is a Strix Z270E motherboard and i7-7700K processor with four 16 gig sticks of G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM. Also, we have two 1080 Ti Founders Editions graphics cards, a 1000 watt EVGA power supply, the Kraken X41 liquid cooler for the PC, nine Thermaltake Ring 14 RGB fans, two Crucial SSDs, an HD60 Pro Elgato, a Razer Diamondback mouse, Firefly mouse pad, and Black Widow Chroma Keyboard, and all of this is in a Thermaltake The Tower 900 PC case. Now that you've seen what's inside the PC, let's get into what programs that I use when I stream and when I record, and what I use to edit. So first, we're going to switch over to the desktop mode, and I am going to drag over OBS. So that you can see what I'm doing, this is the transition <laughs> between desktop and close-up scene. So this is OBS. We'll start with what I use for settings. Now, what I use for settings may be different than what you should use for settings. We'll start there. But under general, I switch my theme to dark. This is just easier for me. It's easier on your eyes. Uh, under stream tab, you are going to put in which streaming service you use. And of course, your key. And that will come from whichever streaming platform you're using, whether it be Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, but don't share that key with anybody because if you do, then they can start streaming onto your service for you. Under output, this is where a lot of controversy happens. What bit rate should I run? What encoder? What, whether I should run main or whether I should run, you know, all of these advanced settings, I wouldn't mess with when you first start to stream. I actually don't mess with them now because mine run greats, mine runs great on simple mode at 10,000 bit rate, which is what OBS detected on its own for me. Uh, I did run advanced before and I had to fine tune a little bit and then something would change from YouTube or Twitch. I'd have to fine tune it again. I'd switch what game I was playing. So between doing the Elgato and when I was using a uh, game capture in OBS, I would have to change these settings again to smooth my stream back out. And I found it's just much easier to go with the simple output mode. If you have a good graphics card, then you can switch over to hardware encoding, which is what I use. Of course, I have two 1080 Ti's, so I let them do all the work. I leave my audio bit rate at 160 because 160 is the best that the streaming services are going to do for you anyway. Even if you run it at 192, it is going to downcode your bitrate to 160 in your stream. So why make your PC do more encoding for 192 if it's not going to play it anyway? Under audio, the things I would want to point out here are your sample rate really depends on the microphone that you're using. 
if you're using a microphone that's 44.1 like I am, leave it on 44.1. If you have a different mic that runs 48, then switch it to 48. Um, select the microphone that you use for your recording. For me, it's my Yeti. And then everything else is all preference. Uh, under video, I don't downscale at all. I stream at 1080, so all of mine is left alone. My base canvas is 1080, so my output is 1080. Uh, make sure that you're at the frame rate that you want. For mine, I run 60 frames a second. If you're running a little bit slower system or you notice that your stream gets laggy on your end, not on somebody else's, but you actually notice it in OBS that you're dropping frames, you're using a high PC uh, percentage, then drop from 60 down to 30 frames. And that cuts all of the encoding in half because instead of making 60 frames a second, you only have to make 30. Makes it a lot easier on your PC. Uh, hotkeys, I do not have any of those set up. And under advanced, the only thing I would say to change under advanced is set your process priority too high. At least above normal, but when you're streaming, the main priority that you you have on your computer is for it to make the stream. So why not make it the highest priority for your computer at the time? Now we'll go through some of my scenes. Uh, so to start my stream, I run the starting soon uh, scene. So you would hit start streaming, transition over to that. Whenever you feel like or whenever that scene is over, then I switch to my uh, intro scene, which is just a short video. And then after that, I go into my close-up scene or into my standard scene. Now the standard scene is the one, of course, that most people will play all their games on while you're in gameplay. And for example, in PUBG, whenever I'm dead and I want to speak to the audience and be a little bit more personable, I would transition over to my close-up scene. Under my scene, I have all of the sources that I use on this scene. Now, you don't have to use all these sources, and of course, a lot of people don't use this many. Some people use a lot more than I do. But recent donations, top donator's name, and Streamlabs are all with the donation at the top of my screen is the first two and then the stream labs is the one whenever a new subscriber or donation happens it will pop up the duck punt logo and say who it is and that they subscribed or that they donated now i'm going to stop there to let you know if you want this to run well then another program that you want to run with it from stream labs is the stream lab stream labels and as long as you have this running on your desktop at the time, it will refresh much sooner than the browser source. So while I have this running, as soon as somebody does a sub, uh, subscription or they do a donation, I, it notifies me immediately. And I get the little notification thing that everybody on the stream gets to see, but I also get to hear this so that I know to look over and say, oh, thank you such and such for the donation or for subscribing. The logo, of course, is my little logo up there. That is just a still image. Uh, the new donations, so you can see it's highlighting each thing as I do it. That is just text that I put onto my overlay so that you can see what I'm actually telling you about. Same thing for top donation is another text. Top overlay is an image. It's showing the full screen, but that's just because of the way that I built it in Photoshop. Really, the only thing it's showing is that very top bar with my little yellow honeycomb stuff and the circle around my duck. And then my input is Elgato, and I'm going to explain a little bit on this one because a lot of people have asked about it. I will drag OBS out of the way. And the reason a lot of people are asking me about this, I actually have a big enough PC that I don't have to worry about running a game capture, screen capture, or display capture. Um, but if you run your HDMI cable that normally runs to your middle monitor, which you would game on when you're PC gaming, and run that into your Elgato, into the in, and then from your Elgato out, run to that same monitor, now you can use the Elgato as your video capture device for the game, and your computer and your graphics card don't have to render these graphics twice. That's why a lot of people have really glitchy video in either very vibrant or a scene or a part of the game that has a lot of motion. It's because when you're capturing it as a game capture on OBS, you're making that video card, video card put that video out twice. It's doing it once for OBS and it's doing it once for yourself while you're playing the game. 
So by going to my Elgato and capturing this way, I have a different piece of hardware doing the encoding for me and my PC usage stays much lower, like less than half than if I do it as a game capture. So I run it this way just to make it easier on my system. It makes it so that I can run more videos as sources under OBS. And you know, for anybody who has a lower end PC and is still trying to stream a PC game, if you have an Elgato, I would recommend running it through that Elgato. Now, moving on, uh, one of the other things that I use is Fussbot. That is my chat bot for YouTube. For everybody that's in my chat, it's RoboDuck. Uh, you can do all of that right through here in the settings page. Uh, you can name your bot whatever you want to name it because what the bot actually is is another YouTube channel that you create. It doesn't have to have videos or anything else on it. But what you do is you create that channel and you give it a profile picture and then you authenticate it here. And once you do that, every post by your bot will look like it's coming from that YouTube channel. So for me, it's Fussbot, uh, RoboDuck. So that's where RoboDuck gets this little icon. It's not actually an icon, it's a YouTube channel profile picture. And through Fussbot, the first thing you would do, of course, is connect, which is what I always forget to do, and you guys have to remind me because RoboDuck's not working. Then under, once he's connected under control, this is where you can look at your viewers, how many minutes they've watched, how many coins, or in my case, how many quackers they've earned. You can do auctions, you can do giveaways, which is what everybody sees as a raffle in my stream is a giveaway. And the way that I do that is I up this to however many minutes I want to run the raffle for, start the raffle, everybody puts in the command that you give it, minus exclamation raffle. And when the timer runs out, it'll just notify you who the winner was. It will tell you here on the Fuzzbot page. It will also tell you in your YouTube chat. You can do other things that I don't actually utilize, which are poll, betting. Uh, you can do a queue if you want. Everybody could say exclamation next, say is your queue. Then everybody who puts exclamation next in the chat, they will put them up in the order that they put it in, that you could pull viewers to play a game with you, whatever you needed to do. Um, configuration, this is where you would set up all of your coin system. Like for me, Quackers, you can see where I have everything put in. You can also set it up for how often they have to chat in order for the Quackers to count. For me, I put they gain 60 coins every 60 minutes so that if they show up and they chat and then they go AFK or lurk mode, then they still earned that 60 quackers for that hour. So when that hour is up, it counts their 60 quackers. Other people set it at 5 minutes or 15 minutes and they take the amount of coins up or down, whichever way you want to do it and whatever you're using your coin system for. For mine, it is here, which is my loyalty shop, uh, which actually works now. And these are some of the things that you can buy on mine. If this is a perfect example, the share of the wealth. If I want to update this, I can right click it and edit. And then I can add how many of them are in stock, save item, and now my viewers can purchase those again. Underneath it, you can see the purchases, which are the people that have purchased something in your loyalty shop. It also shows up in your stream and your bot will notify the chat that, for example, Zuma Ready purchased a raid run. So then you can use these things as an incentive for people to chat and for people to gain their coins in your stream. Then after Fussbot and all of that would be done for streaming, now for making videos like the one I'm making right now, I use Adobe Premiere. The version that I use is CS6. Uh, there are newer versions and older versions also still work very well. The reason I use CS6 is the one I'm most comfortable with. I've used it the most. And as you can see here, this is the timeline I've currently created for the video that I'm making now. So once I get done doing this section of the video, then I will add it to the timeline here. And then I will add my outro video to the end of this. And then I will export this video. Now, some of the things I want to point out in Adobe Premiere is if you're using 
a recording software that does variable frames, or if it says VFR, variable frame rate, Adobe Premiere is not gonna work for you. What happens is, as you go down this timeline, Adobe is going to put an exact frame rate to the video. So if it's set at 60 frame, then it's gonna run 60 frames no matter what, and the audio will stay in the frame rate to match it. But what happens with variable frame rate is the audio doesn't vary, but the video frame rate does. So what you're gonna see is your video frame rate, when you go to export a video that you've created here, is your sound is either gonna end up ahead or behind your video, depending on how much action was happening in the video when it was recorded on variable frame rate. What this means is if you shoot a video and let's say you go AFK and your person is just standing there doing nothing, then your frame rate is gonna go lower than 60 because variable frame rate is trying to save space. And then if you get into something that has a really high, you know, a lot of action is going on on the screen, it'll go above 60 so that it can catch all the frames. Well, when you go to, to edit this in Premiere, it's not gonna line up your audio anymore because it's gonna make everything exactly 60 frames or 30 or whatever you recorded it. So make sure that anything that you're gonna record with, if you're gonna use Premiere to do your video editing, make sure that it does constant frame rate. Uh, other than that, if we go to the top under project and project settings under general, right here is another good thing to know when you're using Premiere is under render, if you only have the playback engine software, then your rendering and your encoding are gonna happen a lot slower than if you do your GPU acceleration. Mine is, is enough of a difference that when I go to render and export this video, if I was doing it with only the software, with as big as my PC is, it would take about 10 to 15 minutes. And while doing it with the GPU acceleration, it's only gonna take three to five minutes. And beyond that, there are many things that you can do in editing software. You can create transitions, you can add pictures, you can do voiceovers like I am now. The only thing I can tell you when it comes to this stuff is that there are a lot of videos out there showing you how to do a lot of things in these programs. And there are a lot of people that make those videos that teach you the wrong way of doing things or a very roundabout way to get to something because there are very few people that know all the ins and outs to Adobe Premiere, for example. I've been using it now for about eight years. I probably know about half of what's available in Premiere. So that is Adobe Premiere. And that is all of the things that I use to do my streaming and recording. Let me switch back over to my close-up screen. <laughs> And thanks for watching. If you have any questions or any comments, let me know below. And you guys have fun streaming and recording and uploading to your various platforms. Bye.